Well, 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 good evening, another night, Toxic Reality Show, every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, today, we're going to talk about, we got some catching up to do, Bailey's, uh, Tyler Perry. Some of you would be upset with the type of movies and content that he's made over the years, but in an interesting interview that he did recently, he discussed something that Kevin Samuels and many of gentlemen like myself in the manosphere have said regarding the dating options available to women and how that, if you heard me last week talk about the interview with Ebony K. Williams, um, about the options that are available and Tyler, you know, made a couple suggestions. Now, mind you, this man is a billionaire, so he deserves to be listened to. And of course, one could argue I'm selectively picking who I choose to listen to for content as opposed to his treasure trove of movies um, where they're where they paint women as the victim. The guys are always the bad guy. The salacious activities, cheating, you name it, evil, bad, abusive, physically abusive. Generally, in many of the movies, the men are depicted the same way. But the women are always the victims and they rise from the ashes despite the actions of these men. It's a common theme. So rather than let's get let's let's let Mr. Perry. Now this is an excerpt of um, Higher Living of another podcast with one of his employees. And this is a about a two minute excerpt of this. And this is and I wanted to give enough context beforehand because um, many people are just showing the one minute. I'm showing two minutes to give to give you the full context and tone of what he was saying, which, in my opinion, is not unreasonable. So with that, we'll, we'll let Mr. Perry say it in his own words. Meet me at my word. Yeah. We were all like, wow. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And 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 anybody who can't do that, that doesn't mean they're not worthy of mm -hmm. you. That means that they need to either attempt, mm -hmm. try, learn, mm -hmm. find out enough about you to be able to figure out what that is. Yes. And that's not money because yep. because you listen, a, a lot of women, especially black women, and mm -hmm. I might get in trouble for saying this, but I will. In the in in our society right now. Mm -hmm. Black women are making a lot more money for the most part than yeah. black men, right? There are a lot of black men who are successful, but for the most part, black women are making the money. So you, if you can find love, if that man works, you know, at whatever job mm -hmm. and is a good man and is good to you mm -hmm. and honors and honors the house and honors his wife and does what he can mm -hmm. because his his gift may not be your gift exactly that is okay mm -hmm. that's not somebody who's beneath you yeah that's somebody who came to love you at your work mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right yeah and as long as he's secure in himself to mm -hmm. know that yep she makes most of the money all i can pay is the light bill as long as she's comfortable enough to say i'm gonna cover the mortgage and all the other stuff you can the light bill baby you can take me to dinner every now and then mm -hmm. that is fine yeah that's fine mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but that's so hard for a lot of people to take in because that means, no, no, no. I need somebody to, who is, <laughs> I need, I, they need to make five times more and I got to have, the, I got to have, well, you uh -huh. keep, but go, keep, keep, looking, go on, keep your list, baby. Yeah. God, God bless you. Hope it happens. Go on, keep your list. <laughs> but when you talk about just someone to love you and support yes. you, I, I know people who have, who, whose men can't touch what they make. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when you see them together, that love, that support, that that I got you, babe, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Meet me at now. Full disclosure. Um, I've met Mr. Perry years ago with the business that I owned in Atlanta. Now that business has been closed, but I do. Did, did have some non-compete, non-disclosure agreements in place. I think it's okay for me to say that on my experience of meeting him, I don't know him like a best friend in his business, 
But the few conversations that we did have personally, it's a good man. Okay? The stories that he shared with me personally on his rise to fame was rocky um, to describe at best. This brother earned every penny and believed in himself to the point that he's a billionaire that you see today. And, you know, later on, as the show gets going, I'll share a funny story regarding Mr. Perry, you know, Mr. Tyler Perry. And, and because he was a client, I still refer to him even today as Mr. Perry. I don't call him Tyler. We, you know, I don't, I don't address my clients like that. And although he is no longer a client for, for my business, I still have that respect and reverence. And based on those conversations, I can tell you it's a good brother. That being said, you heard his words on this podcast. And we're going to go now as we usually do. And again, I'm looking up at the big, the big screen. So if you see me looking up, I'm looking up at the big screen. But you're right here. So let's break down these elements of what he's saying because he's cancel culture is trying to come after Tyler and he even said it I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying this that's what this show is all about the toxic reality show that even reality is toxic let's go step by step through what he said at my worth yeah. and we were all like wow now the topic is meet me at my worth W-O-R-T-H and he had just told her she shared that many times that, that that Tyler would tell her, you know, you're up here and, you're, and your man is down here. Or and you're, sorry, you're down here. Your man is up here and you need to rise up and meet together, right? It's almost like saying being equally yoked, right? So let's go with it. Wow. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And, and, and anybody who can't do that, that doesn't mean they're not worthy of mm -mm, you. Mm -mm. That means that they need to either attempt, mm -hmm. try, learn, mm -hmm. find out enough about you to be able to figure out what that is. Yes. And that's not money because, yep. because you, listen, a, a lot of women, especially black women. And mm -hmm. Okay, here's where it goes. And he's saying, this isn't necessarily money. He's saying, listen, if there's somebody that comes into your life, man or woman, that they need to meet you at your worth. Like you're 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 at a plane right here. I'm ready to settle down. I'm ready for marriage. I'm ready for whatever. And he's saying, you know, let's I switch to a better view. But I will. He's saying, it, it, pause that. He's saying, it's not necessarily a financial thing where a lot of women are like, well, he needs to make X, Y, and Z and six packs, six figures, six, 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 all these numbers, right? He's saying. He just needs to be able to meet you there on a on a on an emotional connection where this brother just this man just loves you. Right? And it's not about money, it's not about this, that, and your third, but just genuine love for another being, which is beautiful, and that's what he's saying. Let's let him continue. In the in in our society right now, mm -hmm. black women are making a lot more money for the most. Now let's let's talk about that. That's a whole show topic. But understand the hierarchy of power that exists in America. There's white men, there's white women, there's black women, and there's black men. Latino above black men, Asian above black men, and black women. So when you look at the dynamics in the United States, although black men and women, black men were above black women because the black men were taking care of the household after the 60s the paradigm shifted so we laid down bled struggled for our sisters for our sisters they advanced in in career got the opportunities and then said why aren't you guys carrying your weight because we took all the beat we laid down for you so that the family can come up and rise. You about you. That's the difference. And the black, and so to say, I help you up the ladder and then you to look down at me and say, why aren't you coming up here? Because I don't have anybody to lift me up like you did. 
Just let Mr. Perry continue. It's part than yeah. black men, right? There are a lot of black men who are successful, but for the most part, black women are making the money. So you, if you can find love, if that man works, you know, at whatever job mm -hmm. and is a good man and is good to you mm -hmm. and honors and honors the house and honors his wife and does what he can mm -hmm. because his his gift may not be your gift. Exactly. Now your gift might be financial resources because understand when companies are trying to check off boxes when they hire people, oh, they want to appear as diverse. Did you hire a woman or a person of color? A black woman gives you two. When you hire a black man, you only get you only get benefits for hiring a black person. But there's an advantage for companies to hire a person who's black and a person who's a woman. You get to check two check boxes with one person. So is it any surprise that many companies will overlook or potentially do because with a black woman or a person of color and woman, if you get to strike two boxes, if that person's Native American, if they're Latino, if they're a veteran, if they're a veteran black woman disabled, you get four. So black men are at the bottom of the totem pole. And what he's saying again is, if this person loves you, and let me try to make sure I'm paying attention to people in the chat. What's going on? Mr. Fabian, I see you. After the MLK movement, the government set up to break the strong black family union. That is absolutely correct. And what they did, unbeknownst to us as, as black men, we thought we're going to help and support and cheer on our sisters. But again, like I said, the example, we helped you. We helped let you stand on our, climb on our back stand up and jump onto the second floor you didn't throw down a lifeline for us and then you say what's wrong with you why can't you get yourself up here i didn't have anybody right that is okay mm -hmm. that's not somebody who's beneath you yeah that's somebody who came to love you at your worth mm -hmm. which which is an interesting statement for him to say the words are so powerful. He's saying that person is not beneath you. Who said that person is? See, even Mr. Perry is basically saying that that is the mindset that black women think black men are beneath them. I didn't say it. Just breaking down what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And as long as he's secure in himself to know that, yep, she makes most of the money. All I can pay is the light bill. As long as she's comfortable enough to say, I'm going to cover the mortgage and all the other stuff. Now, the woman doesn't have any problem with covering the mortgage. The issue is, does she emasculate the man because he doesn't have the money? And likewise, on the other side, is that man, and that was a good point he made, is he secure enough? Because by nature, men are the provider. Right. We think of ourselves as the one that provides where we go out there and make the money. So when we are not doing that, it makes us feel as though something is wrong. That we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing and we're operating outside our masculinity. So he's saying if you're secure enough. So any man that's not cool with that is insecure. No, that man is just operating as a man. And that's our role as men is to provide. And it's uncomfortable. This is not a security issue, sir. You can have a light bill, baby. You can take me to dinner every now and then. Mm -hmm. That is fine. Yeah. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but that's so hard for a lot of people to take in because that means, no, no, no. I need somebody to... Who is <laughs> I need I they need to make five times more and I got to have the I got to have well you uh -huh. can, but. here's what's interesting about his comment. Here we have a billionaire who has heard this mantra of what a man needs to have. I gotta give it to him. He's still connected to the community, he's still listening and knows what's going on. These are what women are saying this man is a billionaire recognizes it understands it and says and hears it and thinks it's ridiculous 
to the point that he's making parody of it. It's comedy to him. This is a billionaire saying, you talking about these women want a man like him? A six foot something bachelor with only one child and he's got billions of dollars. But listen, I got to have, well, you uh, keep, but go on, keep, keep, go on, keep your list, baby. Yeah. God, God bless you. Hope it happens. Go on, keep your <laughs> list. He, he's saying, go on, keep your list. Yeah, he got to be six figures. He he got to be six feet tall. He's like, keep your list. Because what he ain't said, you're going to be lonely. You're going to be there with your cats and, do cats and dogs, investing in, in all kinds of insurance for your cats and dogs. And you're going to get hand, you're going to be on the, the penis carousel with all of these men who are banging you and throwing you out. Straight sport fish. Yes, yeah, she look good. I done had my use, drained my, 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 drained my balls. And now it's on to the next one because I'm not putting up with your stuff because there's hundreds of other women. Hundreds. Yes. <laughs> but when you talk about just someone to love you and support yeah. you. Now it's funny, the hostess is laughing. But if you listen to the whole video, listen to her whole video, she basically is one of those people with all these requirements. But she's laughing because her boss is saying it. But he's telling you Look, baby, you ain't gonna get somebody like me. The, 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 or the, not that you're not, the likelihood and chances are low. And because I just put you in one of my shows, you now are making more than 95% of the men out there. You're gonna have to make a decision where this is, if you're looking for a dude that's at your level or higher, there's few. I, I know people who have, who whose men, can't touch what they make. Mm -hmm. Now what he's talking about, if you listen to further on in the video, he's talking about Oprah and Stedman. And in an example, one time they were all escorted to their limos and Stedman was left out. And when he tried to walk up to the car, mind you, this is a six foot plus dude. Security pushed him back. And Stedman in, in, in great security and poise, was just like in a calm voice because he could have been like yo that's my girl what you doing get off me right now mind you everybody else in the limo didn't think let me grab Stedman and pull him in kind of foul he was like hey I'm I'm with the lady if you would please let me in. Like, oh yeah come on yes that's Stedman let him in come on but he handled it cool he didn't trip and that's what he's talking about Stedman's comfortable in his and fine and secure in his masculine frame. He understands that she's a billionaire and I don't make her kind. He got his own money, but it ain't her kind of money. But he's cool. You know, you'll probably hear the, the, the sirens in the background. Hey, we in Baltimore now. Sorry, let me say it right. Baltimore now. This is where the show is at. So let's continue. Mm -hmm. But when you see them together, that love, that support, that that I got you, babe, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing. It is, yeah. it is. Yeah. Now what he's talking about, the I got you, day, got you, babe, he's saying that as a man, I'm still gonna be your protector. I may not be able to provide at the level that you do, but I also can provide leadership for you when you're having a bad day, when it's rough and you need someone to help with the decision making or something, a, a difficulty at work in the business. I'm still a man and can help with making those decisions if you need me, but best believe, if somebody's chasing down old girl with a knife, he gonna stand in the way and, and handle that. Your dog and your cat ain't gonna do that. Now, unless you get a trained dog, but that's gonna also limit your dating options when you got a killer pit bull in the house and many dudes ain't coming by to see you. So this was a, a interesting interview. And Mr. Perry is catching heat because all the people that support and love his programming feel betrayed that he basically suggested date an average guy, the guys that make 40, what is it? Something like uh, most of the black men in this country make around 50,000 a year, heck, all men. Six figures is only 7% of black men, 10% of white guys. You're talking about a diamond in the rough. You're talking about the Talented 10, a, a, a term that was coined over a hundred years ago. That being said, I thank you all that came in and joined the show. 
Um, thank you, my friends, on YouTube and on Facebook. I see you. I appreciate the love. And next week, we're going to get into another topic. I invite you to please become a part of the Toxic Reality Show. Man, I got paint on my hands. I was painting. Um, I love doing how, work in my own home. That being said, I invite you to come through next week, 7 p.m., and we're going to get at it again. We might talk about, you know, Tia Lowry <laughs> and her recent post. I might chop into that this week, to be honest with you, because I got to get more on top of as it drops to get on it. That being said, I love you all. You know, thank you again, Mr. Fabian. And uh, we're going to be back next week. I invite you, please tell your friends, share the link uh, through the move. You know, now that we're here in Baltimore on the East Coast, you know, I missed about six weeks. So we're going to get back on track of content, videos daily, our shorts, and of course, still maintaining this weekly 7 p.m. show. With that, all the best. Bless.